Is it coming through the... Lovely. Excellent. Good morning. How are we this morning? Everybody's had a nice shower on the way here, <laughs> even if you hadn't planned it. Yes, which, which is good. But uh, we come and today is New Year's Eve, isn't it? Uh, I don't know how many of you plan to try and stay up uh, to see the new year in. Um, I, I think that's our intention, but I think I might have to have a nap this afternoon if, if I want to make it. But um, we often think New Year's Eve has two sides, doesn't it? There's, there's the, the partying and, and the celebration and all that. But there's also the reflection, the, the time to, to look back and to consider what you want the, this next year to be. And um, this morning, I thought, we might have a little bit more of a reflective service today. Uh, take some time uh, in prayer uh, take some time to reflect on the year ahead and the year that's gone. So we're going to sing together number to start our worship number 42. Um, In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan, earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. And uh, the words will come up on the screen, but I invite you to stand and we'll sing together. somebody read the words to the final verse? It's a wonderful question there, isn't there? What can I give him? Poor as I am. No matter what earthly treasures we might have, before God we're poor, aren't we? What can we give him that's of value? And we can give him ourselves, give him our hearts. Let's sing that final verse together.
Father God, we just come before you and ask that as we enter this time of worship, that uh, we come giving our hearts, giving of ourselves, and in so communing with you and um, drawing closer into your presence. Guide us and direct us by your spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. In the Gospel of Matthew, we read these verses. You are the light of the world. A city on the hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men. That they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. I wonder, have you ever been in a dark place? We just sang a carol, didn't we? In the bleak midwinter. It doesn't give an image of a bright place, does it? I wonder if you've ever found yourself in a dark place trying to find your way through. And the hope that a single bit of light would bring you in that journey. The promise of warmth, the promise of security. Jesus says we are the light of the world. We reflect his light to people, to a world that's in darkness, that's trying to find its way. What joy, what hope can be brought when we live our lives for Christ. We're going to sing again, and we're going to sing number 68. I'm, I've tried to pick some hymns that we didn't really cover uh, during the rest of the Christmas period. Once in royal David's city stood a lowly cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. We're going to sing this, and as we do, we're going to enter into a time of prayer. We're going to start our prayers by praying for thanks. We're going to give thanksgiving in our prayers. And uh, as we sing, I'm going to light some candles here. I, d I don't know if you can see it very well, but it says 2023. So I want us to give thanks for the year we've had, the good things God has done in this year. Some of us at the moment might struggle to think what that is, but we're going to pause and have a time to reflect. And we have a sheet here with some prayers that we're going to join in together and uh, give God some thanks and take some moments to pause. So let's sing together, uh, Once in Royal David City. Once in Royal David City stood a
lovely. I underestimated how long it would take to light the candles, but Rebecca's going to uh, finish lighting those for us. But we come into a, a time of thanks, and uh, I'd invite you to read the words that are in bold. You should have a sheet. If you don't have a sheet, maybe you could share with somebody, or the, if there's any sheets left at the back. Um, but uh, we'll just go through these prayers of thanks together. And after each time when you speak, we're going to pause. And during those pauses, I invite you just to consider um, how God has helped you in those ways. Let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God. Loving Creator, we asked for strength, and you gave us difficulties to make us strong. We asked for wisdom, and you gave us problems to solve. Together, we ask for prosperity, and you gave us purpose and brains to use. We ask for courage, and you gave us fears to overcome. And together again, we asked for patience, and you gave us situations where you were forced to wait. We asked for love and you gave us troubled people to help. And together, we ask for justice, and you called us to be just and to lead with integrity. Lord, we receive nothing that we asked for. Sorry, we we received nothing we asked for or wanted, and yet we received everything that we needed. For this, we give you thanks. Amen. Amen. Rebecca is going to come, and she's going to bring us our Bible reading. Uh, which is taken from the book of James, and it's James chapter 1, verses 1 through to 18. James chapter 1, verses 1 through to 18. For using the Blue Core Bible, it's page 1213. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations, greetings. Greetings. 
Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. Now that person should not respect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. But the rich should also take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all that he created. Amen. Thank you, Rebecca. We'll take some time to look at those words in a little while. But before we do, we're going to sing again, this time number 62. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. And as we do, we're going to come into a time of prayer of confession. And uh, we'll take some moments to reflect on the year that has passed and uh, to give to the Lord those things which we need to leave in 2023 so that we are free to live in 2024. So let's sing together. In ancient times 
did give the law. In cloud and majesty and awe, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to Satan's tyranny. Depths of hell thy people save, and give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadow put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to As we come, let us, in prayer, let us prepare our hearts. Most gracious God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone. We've not loved you with our whole heart. We've not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we might delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name amen amen as we continue we're going to sing again and as we sing we're transitioning from prayers of confession into prayers of intercession there are things I'm sure we would happily leave in 2023, but things that sadly are going to follow us into 2024. Situations which need our prayers, which need God's presence and hand at work in them. So we're going to sing together, O Little Town of Bethlehem, and after we finish, we're going to come into a time of prayer together, prayers of intercession. Let's sing together. Silent. 
Let in our dark street shining the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in them tonight, tonight. Oh, morning star. silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his have. No ear may hear his coming, but in Where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. Out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us. Our As we come into this time of intercession, I'd encourage you to look at your sheets, and uh, the bit in bold is your response. So I, I will uh, read the first bit, and you come in with the response, Lord, hear our prayer. At the start of a new year, let us pray for people everywhere in every kind of need. We pray that our wonderful gift may be manifest in, sorry, your wonderful gift may be manifest in us, that we in our turn may discover our own gifts and use them to your glory. We pray for your church across the world and here in Catford, especially those people of faith living in conflict areas. May they remember to love and learn to live in harmony and mutual respect, recognizing our similarities and celebrating our differences. May we see this year a resolution to these conflicts. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all in authority that this year they, may, they will have the wisdom, mercy, and respect to find solutions to the situations which see many families and individuals struggling. We pray for all who suffer in dignity, deprivation, starvation, fear, or loss of freedom at the hand of others. May they not just find freedom in you, 
but also in their circumstances. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are without faith, hope, or love. We pray for those who are sick, desperate, or bereaved, and for those who care for them and seek to bring them relief from their suffering. Give them the strength and courage to carry on and hope for the future. We pray especially for all those known to us who are in special need of our prayers, and we remember them now in a moment of silence. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can extinguish. We remember before God those who've died and the family and friends they leave behind. We remember. You turn our darkness into light. In your light shall we see light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing again, and as we sing, I'd invite you to come forward with your offerings. Let's sing together. It's 103, while shepherds watched their flocks by night. The piano will lead us. Did you change the tune on me? (laughs) Shepherds watched their flocks by night. All seated on the ground, the angel came, the Lord came down, and gloom the glory shone around. The glory shone around, the glory shone around, the glory shone around. Sound this day is born of David's line, a savior who is Christ the Lord, and this shall be the Christ the Lord, and this shall be the sign, and this shall be the sign, and this shall be the sign. Find to human view displayed, all meanly wrapped in swaddling bands, all meanly wrapped in swaddling bands, and in the manger lay, and in the manger lay. I wonder for the last two verses, 
It's just there's a lot of people sitting staring at me and not singing. If we could switch to the tune that we would most more likely recognize. So it's either going to be... Oi. There we go, see? So we're, I think we're on... Um, we're on verse 5. Yeah, okay. I want to hear you all singing now. Okay. <laughs> Thus spake the seraphim forth with appeared a shining throng of angels praising God who thus addressed their joyful song. All glory be to God on high and of the earthly peace, good will henceforth from God to man begin and never cease. Dear God, thank you for all the gifts and opportunities that you give us. And we want to give this money back to you as a symbol, but actually we For those of you who don't know, that is the tune that they sing while shepherds watch in Yorkshire. Um, so that's the, the tune they use. So uh, I, Rebecca was born in Yorkshire, so I don't know if, <laughs> if, if she was wanting to feel a little bit at home uh, or if it was Pam. Uh, just <laughs> but uh, but that's, that's the different tune. So who knows? We might use it in the future. At least you've had a nice introduction to it. But, um, but I, I suppose it would be an understatement to say that Jesus' birth changed things. Do you think? Do you agree with me? Yeah. 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 Are half of you asleep? Yes. Maybe. I know there's been a lot of prayer. It's been easy maybe to nod off today. But uh, no, Jesus' birth changed things, didn't it? It changed things forever. And not just for Mary and Joseph... Who, who became parents for the first time, but changed things for the whole world. Because now they had a Savior. And that brought hope in salvation. And those who were witnesses to the birth of Jesus, those that we've been looking at as we've journeyed through the Christmas season, who'd been kind of let in on the secret of who Jesus was, who, who had been announced to, about why Jesus had come, they had a decision to make. They had to decide what world were they going to live in going forward. Were they going to keep living in the old world that had no hope and no savior? Or would they live in the new world that had a savior and a hope and a hope of eternity? Would they go back to their lives and pretend as if nothing had happened and just live life the way they always had? Or would they go and be changed people? The last few years, they've been eventful, haven't they? Brexit, COVID, political unrest, impacts of climate change, not to mention increasing conflicts and the suffering of innocent people 
and the struggle for many people just to provide for themselves and their families. We're in a world that's been become dominated by the threat of disaster and unrest, haven't we? One can be left feeling hopeless, overwhelmed by the burden of everything that's going on. If there was ever a time when people needed to hear good news, it's now. James paints for us in these verses that he brings another world. A world that was inaugurated with Jesus' birth and established by Jesus' death and resurrection. And this morning we're going to take a few moments to look at these verses and just pick out a few things, a few um, earmarks of what this world looks like. Now, um, those of you that, that know me well probably know by now that I listen to a lot, of, uh, a lot of podcasts. I listen to the radio a lot. I find it helpful in the background when I'm working away on the computer. And um, this week, I, I was listening to one, and they were kind of reviewing everything that had been going on recently in, in 2024 and around the world. And they started to get on to Rishi Sunak. Now, I'm not being political here. I'm just giving, I'm not telling you one way or another what to think. But they were talking about how Rishi Sunak had been handling all the strikes. We've had a lot of strikes this year, haven't we? Yes. Yes. (laughs) Thank you, Shirai. Shirai's awake. And uh, they've been looking at the way that he'd been handling it, one of the presenters said, I'm really surprised Rishi Sunak was, was still fighting so hard on these strikes. After all, he could have just given them the money and let the next government worry about how they're going to pay for it. And I heard that statement and I thought, that sums up this world, doesn't it? Pass the buck. Look for the short-term win, even though it might have long-term problems. I used to work with a core treasurer, and um, he used to be a financial director for for a large company. And and he used to talk about how their policy was deny, uh, avoid, and blame. So uh, what you do is, is you deny that it's a problem. Or you avoid the truth, and if none of that works, you blame somebody else. But that's how the world is, isn't it? That's how the world is. This new world, though, that Jesus inaugurated is one that tells us to stand steady during times of trouble. Not to give up, not to turn back, but to keep going. James in 2 verses 2 to 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. He encourages us to endure and not to run away. The word he uses here for for perseverance or patience um, is the word... Uh, I, I'll probably not pronounce it right. Hu, hupomun. Uh, I probably pronounce it wrong. It's H U P O M O N E. I don't know if anybody can help me with my pronunciation, but hupomun. Okay? And it, it takes two words, two separate words, hupo and mun, and puts them together. And hupo means to be under something. Okay, and mon means to abide, to stay with. So when he says to persevere, what he's saying is don't just put up with it because you have to put up with it, because you have no other choice. He's saying make the choice to be steadfast. Make the choice to face the trial. 
This new world of Jesus teaches us to stay and stand by each other when things get hard. To face hardship and trouble when they come. And to journey with those facing hardship and trouble as well. One commentator named Trapp says, Patience must be an inch Sorry, must not be an inch shorter than the affliction. If the bridge reaches but halfway over the brook, we shall all have but ill-favored passage. It's the devil's desire to set us on a hurry. In other words, the devil wants us to give up, to put up with the way it is, to just be stuck with the situation or to flee and run and not resolve it. But God calls us to have patience which endures. Now, this patient endurance of difficult situations is made better or made easier by the second earmark of this new world that Jesus brings. James says to us, doesn't he, if you lack wisdom, ask God for it and he will give it to you. Now, the wisdom bit we could replace with anything. The point that I want to make here that I think James is saying is that we need to be looking to God for the solutions of our problems. Too often, we we try in our prideful way, and I say prideful, try and sort everything out ourselves. We try and do it without God and then wonder why the situation doesn't get better or why the trial still seems too much. James reminds us that God is a God that is bigger than our circumstances and if we want um, help, go to him. The hymn we sing so often in church, when we've reached the end of our hoarded resources, the Father's full giving has only begun. James says to us, if you lack anything, if you need something, ask God for it. But more than that, believe that he'll do it for you. Have faith. And trust that he's going to come through. Too often, as I've already said, we like to think we've got it all sorted. That we have everything we need. I wonder if we turn our minds back a few years ago. How off guard was everybody caught by COVID? How unsure-footed did everybody all of a sudden feel... When it hit, regardless if you lived in a mansion or you lived in in a one up, one down, or two up, two down. Everybody felt lost because we were very, all of a sudden, reminded that as much as we think we've come along, as much as we think we, we have everything we need and we can do it on our own, that there are just some situations that we can't face in our own resources. And that we need God's help and belief that if we ask, he will help us. This leads to a change of mindset. The world we live in values celebrity and fame, doesn't it? There's kids growing up today who um, their ambition in life is to be famous I, I remember a few years ago seeing a thing and them asking kids and then saying, what do you want to be? And they said, oh, I want to be famous. And they said, well, famous for what? They said, well, it doesn't really matter. I just want to be famous. They, they, it's not that they wanted to be doctors or lawyers or, or sports people or actors. They just wanted the fame and the glory. But James says something very different to us, doesn't he? Verse 9, believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. But the rich should take pride in their humiliation. 
this new kingdom that we're introduced to values humility over celebrity. Values people who are humble instead of people who who crave power and want authority. This is perhaps most strongly seen through James himself, the, the man who wrote this book. Can anybody tell me, and uh, I'll even let the officers answer, who wrote the book of James? Oh, that's right. Thank you very much, Massimo. Jesus' brother. James, this James, is Jesus' brother. How does he start his letter? Verse 1 says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. This guy was literally Jesus' brother. He doesn't start the letter by saying, listen to me, because I grew up with him. I knew him better than anybody else. I've got the inside track. I'm important. He was my brother. We shared a bath together. He said, James, a servant of God and of Jesus Christ. He's humbled himself. He recognized who his brother was. And even though they had that familial bond, he still says, I'm your servant. This new world values humility over celebrity. And this humbleness leads to our final point. And that is recognizing part of what we were saying before, recognizing our own need. Our own need for God. To recognize where all the blessings that we have come from. Where do they come from? Nice and loud so I can hear you. From God. James says, doesn't he, in, in 16 to 18, he says to us, Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father. Everything we have, we got because of him. What a way to keep you humble. To remember that everything we have. When you go home and sit on your settee, it's because of God. When you go to bed and wrap a blanket around you and stay warm, it's because of God. We make such a fuss then, don't we, when we have to come forward and put something in there. We say, that's mine. It's not. He gave you the intelligence. He gave you the gifts. He gave you the means to make money. That money is his. All we're doing is giving him a little bit back. We have to maintain that humble position. We need to recognize that everything, every good thing comes from him. That doesn't mean we can lay about and do nothing and just let God take care of it all. Because he gives us gifts for a reason, doesn't he? He gives us gifts so that we can come alongside each other and build each other up, support each other, so that we can truly be the kingdom of God. So as we come into 2024... I want to ask you a question. Which world do you want to live in this year? Are you going to live in the same old world of doom and gloom where we're constantly bombarded by bad news, feeling overwhelmed and helpless? Or do we want to live in the world of hope where, yes, maybe things look dark, but we will endure because Jesus is Lord. Because God is bigger than our circumstances, our troubles, and our situations. Is that the world we want to live in? If it is, 
It's contagious. We need to show that joy to all those other people out there. The the verses we shared at the beginning was, you are the light of the world. We need to show the world that's in darkness, this hope and light and life that only comes through Jesus Christ. Now, every year we try to have a theme for our church, and this year's theme, if, if any of you have already forgotten, if you throw your minds back to September when we were going through the, the NCD, is gift-based ministries. Yes, some, some of you were looking, trying to think, you were searching your mind, I said it, and all of a sudden it came back. It's gift-based ministries. We, we tend to have a theme that we focus on. This year, in addition to that, I want you personally individually to have a Bible reading for the year. A reading that you will read on a daily basis or as much as you can. A read, a Bible reading that you will think about, that you will consider, that, and that you will try and live out. You will bring alive in your own life. And I've got a selection of Bible verses, more Bible verses than, than there are people in this room. So don't worry, everybody will get one. And as we sing our next song, I want to invite you to come forward to the table. You can take your time, you can look at the different verses, and just choose the one that you feel the Lord is drawing you to for 2024. We're going to turn to number 48. Jesus, good above all others. Gentle child of gentle mother, in a stable born our brother. Give us grace to persevere. We'll sing together and then we'll sing the last verse unaccompanied because Pam needs to be able to come. And Pam needs to be able to respond as well. So I invite you to come as we sing together. Jesus good above all others. Jesus good above all others, gentle child of gentle mother, in a stable born our brother, gives us grace to Jesus cradled in a manger for us facing every danger, living as a homeless stranger, make the for thy people dying risen master death defying Lord in heaven thy grace supplying keep us to thy present Jesus bore our sorrow bearers, all our thoughts and hopes thou sharest. Thou to man the truth declarest, help us all thy truth to hear. Unaccompanied. Lord, in all our doings guide us, pride and hate shall ne'er divide us. We'll go on with thee beside us, and with joy we'll
God of all hope and possibilities. We give you 2024. And Lord, I pray that you'll help us to continue to walk in faith with you, putting our hands in yours and trusting you, whatever the year may bring, we'll go on with you beside us. And we thank you for your abiding presence. We thank you that you are a faithful God who doesn't run away in the face of trouble, but is there to protect and to guide. And we thank you for that, Lord. Amen. Amen. Shirai, have you got any announcements? Just one. Just one. <laughs> one. It's all about remembering people in prayer today. And I welcome all once again, um, and good to see you all. Always good to see Kenneth, um, gracias San, for those who haven't met him, it's just over there. Uh, but good to see you all today. So in our prayers, please um, do continue to remember Corny uh, and Douglas, um, both Douglases actually, Douglas Henenberg and Douglas Gardner in your prayers. Please also remember Major Rebecca's brother, uh, who is far from well, and some on our, on our WhatsApp group who know about what's going on there. And also Eileen's brother-in-law, um, who's also far from well, and Eileen herself, who's far from well this morning. Uh, thank you for your prayers for our family. We've had another bereavement. Patience is in Zimbabwe, so pray for her flight back this evening. She's back and she'll arrive tomorrow morning. But thank you for all your prayers. Again, it's been on the WhatsApp group. Um, and also, Doreen Stelionos um, put uh, a request for prayers for, her, um, for Graham and her sister, uh, who are both far from well. The only activity this week is the over 60s, so that's the only announcement today. But it's a wonderful thing. Do join us for tea and coffee after the meeting. Thank you. <laughs> we did have a break for Christmas. Yeah. So don't let this disappear. Don't let it fall behind the settee or get crumpled up in your trousers and washed and destroyed. Find somewhere safe. Cherish it. Uh, there we go. Sharon saying take a picture of it. Then you have it. And uh, yes, read it, reflect on it, study it. There's, you, you get your phone and type the Bible verse and ask for commentary and people will give you insight in, into what it means and understanding. But most importantly, live it. The word comes alive when his people live it and don't just read it. We're going to... Uh, sing our final song together and it's the song which has helped the theme throughout advent number 33 god rest ye merry gentlemen and of course the the verse uh sorry the chorus says "O tidings of comfort and joy comfort and joy let's stand together and sing God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. For Dunham's our Savior was born upon this day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and Shepherds 
at those tidings rejoiced much in mind and left their flocks of feeding in tempest, storm, and wind and went to Bethlehem straightway this blessed babe to Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, become mature, be encouraged, be of the same mind, be at peace, and the love of God and the peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints send you greetings. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.